So today we're gonna be doing a beginner project that is gorgeous, it's elegant, and we're gonna be using a beautiful piece of leather to do it. We're gonna be working on a desk pad. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be working on a desk pad. Now the first thing that runs through your mind may be that a desk pad's just a piece of leather slapped on the desk. Well, to do it right, to make it look elegant and luxurious is actually a few more steps in it than that, but it's nothing that even a beginner can't handle. And to make it, we're gonna be using a gorgeous piece of leather. This is water buffalo, it's a single bend in chocolate, and then we're gonna be lining it with pigskin suede on the back. Now, one of the reasons that I picked this particular leather, other than the fact that it is gorgeous, is that it has a waxy texture to it. Now, it's not sticky or anything like that. It's almost buttery. But because of the wax that's in it, it really repels water beautifully. And because of that, you don't have to worry about like when you're working, if you sit a glass on it that happens to spill or maybe it's sweating a little bit, that water's not gonna penetrate into the leather and you don't have to worry about staining or ruining your desk pad. I did a little bit of research and one of the more common sizes for the really nice desk pads is 36 inches by 17 inches. So what I did is I grabbed some of the paper that the leather came wrapped in and I cut that to size. That's gonna allow me to make sure that I've got enough of the suede liner to cover the entire back of the main piece of leather without having to splice it together, which is really difficult to make it look right. So the next step after we've confirmed that it fits on that piece of suede is to cut the main piece of leather to size and shape. Now I did this off camera just to save time in the video, but if you wanna see a video on best practices for cutting really nice leather, just let me know in the comment section below. We could probably do something like that. Next thing is to line that main piece of suede, but it's a pretty tight fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this main piece of leather down on the suede and mark the edges with a marker. This is gonna serve as a guide as to where I should apply the glue and how to go just a little bit past it to make sure that I don't have any gaps. I'm using barge contact cement, and yes, I'm doing it indoors, but I've got all the windows in the house open and I'm wearing a respirator. Typically, when you're gonna be applying contact cement, you're gonna to wanna to do it in two coats. The first coat essentially primes the surface and the second one is the one that acts as the adhesive. Just let each, each of those two coats dry till it gets tacky. So as I'm applying the glue to that main piece of leather, notice how I'm lifting the edge and then I'm brushing from the inside, the middle of the leather, to the outside. That's gonna help make sure that that glue doesn't wrap around. If I come from the outside in, you're gonna build up on the side of the piece of leather and it can potentially wrap around to the face of the leather, which is not what we want. So always lift the edge or let it hang off the edge of a table and then brush from the middle out. When we put the two pieces of leather together, you really only get one shot. So you might want to get an extra set of hands. And when I'm going to put them together, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the more flexible of the two pieces of leather 
on the table. The reason I want to do that is the piece that's more rigid is more predictable. It's not going to wrinkle on me. I know what it's going to do, which makes it easier to get right the first time. Once we got that done, we can just go in and trim off any excess. So after that, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make sure that the liner is secured really well to the main piece of leather. And the reason for that is one of the next steps that we're gonna be doing is burnishing the edge of the project. And to do that, we need to make sure that there's no gaps between that liner and the main piece. So you're gonna see me using an antler here. It's something that I like using. It's got a nice smooth edge on it, but you can use a bone folder. You could use a spoon. You just need something that's got a rounded edge on it that's nice and smooth, that's not gonna scratch or wrinkle the liner. Before we burnish the edges, we need to round off those corners. A sharp corner like that is really gonna wear poorly, so rounding them off is gonna give it a longer life. To do that, I'm using my corner knives from Weaver. They make really quick work of it. If you wanna get one, we'll put a link in the description. So the next step is gonna to be to bevel the edges of the project. And by bevel, I mean take our edge bevel and round off those corners. We're only gonna be rounding off the top side. The part that's got the liner on it, it wouldn't bevel all that well, so we're not gonna mess with it. We're only beveling the top edge that goes all the way around the top. Now this is a gorgeous piece of leather, and I don't wanna take any chances on the, you know, the, the bevel not performing correctly because it's dull. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strop it on the strop board. You can get one from Weaver before I ever attempt to bevel the top edge of this project. So now that we got that top edge beveled, we need to add some color to it. We can't leave it like it is. It's gonna look unprofessional and, and unfinished, to be honest. So we need to add some color to it. But at the same time, this is one of those areas that if you're not careful, you can get color in areas that you don't want it to be in. So what I did, I used these new markers from Weaver. Now you can put paint, you can put dye in these. Um, they, are, they are fantastic. They come in all different sizes. Like this one's got a much wider head on it than than this one does, um, and it was perfect. I put some Thieving's Pro Dye in chocolate in this marker and then ran it right along the edge and it worked fantastically. If you'd like to see a video on how to, how to load these, different techniques that you can use them for, how to make them work, let me know in the comment section below. We can probably do something on these because they really are a game changer and it makes life a lot easier.
Now, we're getting close. There's only a couple of steps left, but one of the things we really need to pay attention to are those edges. We wanna make sure that we have a really nice, almost glassy finish down that edge. If we run our finger across it, we don't wanna be able to feel any of the fibers or anything like that sticking up, or at least we wanna minimize that as much as possible. So we wanna really put some time into finishing those edges as perfectly as we can. Now, there's a thousand different ways that you can do this. Chuck's famous for saying, if you've got 10 different leather crafters in a room and you ask a question, you're gonna get 12 different answers. And that's really the way it works when it comes to burnishing the edge of a project. But today I'm going to show you the, the, the way I do it, the way that's always worked really well for me. First step is going to be to sand down the edges really lightly. Now this project didn't need it, so I just skipped over that step. Second step is going to be to wax the edges using beeswax. This is going to help bind those fibers together and get them to lay down a lot easier. Then we're gonna go in with our slicker and work it until we start hearing that clicking sound. Then I'm gonna go back with token oil. I'm using the black version just because I wanna darken up the edges. After that, you may notice that it's not quite where you want it, and there's no problem whatsoever. Just repeat the process. You can start with the sanding. If you do sand it again, go back and apply some more of the dye to make sure we get a consistent color, and then just repeat the rest of the process. So it's sand, dye, wax, token oil, or gum tragacanth. Repeat. Now this project doesn't require it, but I'm gonna put a stitch line around the outside of the project. Now the reason I would do this, number one, it's gonna help secure that liner to the main piece of leather, which technically isn't necessary. The glue would do a great job of holding it in place. But even more importantly than that on this particular project, it needs some kind of visual interest on top, on the, on the top face of the project. So I'm gonna go in with Ritza Tiger Thread in white and add that line all the way around the project. So to add the stitches, I need to go in and create a line for my stitching chisel to follow. To do that, I'm gonna grab my wing dividers, I'm gonna set them at a quarter inch, and I'm gonna mark that line all the way around the project. Now, you could go in with a stitching groover. It, it creates a recessed area for the stitches to sit down in. It creates less friction on the stitches over time. But we're using Ritza Tiger Thread, which is a really durable thread, and we're gonna go in later with this hammer and flatten those stitches out, close up those holes. So really between the durability and flattening those stitches out, we should be perfectly fine without doing the stitching groover. Once we got our line marked in, we're gonna grab our stitching chisel and work our way around. Just every so often, make sure that the tines are coming all the way through the leather.
The next step is just to saddle stitch the entire project. Just settle in, put some earbuds in, and enjoy the ride. Now, if you need a little bit more information on how to do a saddle stitch, we've got a great video that goes in depth on how to do that. We'll make sure that there's a link in the description below. So while I'm stitching the project, do me a favor. If this is the kind of video, if this is the kind of content that you like, that you enjoy, that you find helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. It tells me, tells YouTube, tells Weaver that we're on the right track. So the last step is gonna to be to flatten out those stitches and close up those stitching holes. And to do that, I'm gonna be using this leather working hammer from Weaver. And one of the reasons I like it, it's got a nice flat face on it, it's got a good weight to it, and it really doesn't take much, of a, much pressure. It's a very light tap to get the result that you're looking for. We're just trying to flatten out those stitches and close up those stitching holes. And with that, all that's left is to take a look at the final results. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.